Hello, folks. Say, I've got a swell story I want to tell you today. Champ and I are ready for action. The Wrigley Company presents Gene Autry, America's favorite cowboy. And his horse, Champion, the world's wonder horse. Hello, folks. Now, as long as you're all here, and as long as I have a package of double mint gum in my pocket, I guess we're ready to start. Yes, sir, I carry delicious double mint around with me all the time, so I'll have it handy to enjoy any time I want to. And that's plenty often, because you know, folks, you can enjoy that pleasant, easy chewing just about any time, any place. So I'd say swell double mint gum is a mighty convenient treat. And it costs mighty little, too. So how about having some soon, huh? Matter of fact, while you're enjoying our show for today, why don't you join me in a stick of double mint? Thank you. song of the saddle and the clear blue sky above it's there I long to be cause it's where a man is free sing me a song of my home sing me a song of the cowboy as he rides o'er hill and dale he don't know much of art, but the song is from the heart. Sing me a song of the trail. When shadows creep and day is getting long, he sings a tender lullaby. His herd will sleep because they fear no wrong as long as he's riding nigh. Sing me a song of the cowboy And the plains I love to roam Where God and man are one While the work is being done Sing me a song of my home When shadows creep And day is getting long He sings a tender lullaby his herd will sleep because they fear no wrong as long as he's riding nigh. Sing me a song of the saddle and the plains I love to roam where God and man are one while the work is being done. Sing me a song of my home. You know, it's downright unsociable to spoil a fella's song like that. Well, I never did a thing. Yeah, but you look so dry you made my mouth water. Thanks, I could do with a drink. You know you're on the wrong road and 20 miles from nowhere? Well, isn't this the way to the Double D Ranch? Yeah, this is Miss Sandy's road, but it's still quite a far piece on foot. They said at the Rio Hondo that the foreman, Gene Autry, was looking for some riders. I'm Autry. I do need some hands, but sure you can ride a horse? Oh, I've ridden the toughest nags in the country. What's your name? Billy. Billy Stone. OK, Billy. Guess those city clothes had me fooled. Here, now, take it easy. You can do your showing off when you got an audience. I'll let you use my blanket. It's better than riding bareback. What's that? Might be rustlers. Oh, don't tell me they still steal cattle. That only happens in the movies. Uh, since the price of beef is so high, they're thicker than locusts. Bring this horse on in. Oh, boy. Wait a minute. Whoa.
Hi there, Sheriff. Hello, Jane. Good thing I recognized your trucker. You'd been ducking lead. Well, I knew if there were any riders about, those shots would bring them. I was trying to find the trail of those cattle run off from Waterman's place last night. Had a blowout. And they haven't got a spare. Have any idea who the rustlers are? Not yet. But this is one bunch they can't swim across the Rio Grande. They got the border covered. They have to sell those cattle in Texas or else hold up. Either way, I'll find them. Where are the rustlers? Lucky for you, there weren't any. Rustlers carry guns. Sheriff, this is Billy Stone, a new hand of mine. Sheriff? Have been for years. You new around here? Yeah, I, uh, I just came up from Houston. Well, we'd better be moseying along or Miss Sandy will be getting a new foreman. Billy, what'd you do with my slicker? Well, I left it under a mesquite. We'll pick it up on the way back in. I'll call the garage as soon as we get to the ranch, Sheriff. Glad to have met you. Be seeing you. shoot me. Uh, say, Gene. Go in and telephone the garage that the sheriff's got a flat out in Adobe Mesa. Uh, but Miss Sandy says that... You tell Miss Sandy that I'll see her as soon as I wash up. But, Gene... Go I... ahead. All right. Must be getting soft. Where did you ride? Oh, county fairs, fair association, all over. I thought you were a jockey. Next time you want to pass as a cowhand, don't ride slow on your horse's neck. Yes, sir. You can still use me, though, can't you? I do need a job. We'll try to work out something. I'll take you over to the bunkhouse. Howdy, men. Hello. You can take that upper bunk there, Billy. Say, you travel light. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to move, mister. I want to put these things in my bunk. You mean it was your bunk? No, I don't like to start an acquaintance off with an argument. But I have prior rights. But I have the bunk. Look, mister, I'm not looking for trouble. So will you please move? You move. understand each other, this is my bunk. You're sitting on yours. Cowboy, you're gonna be sorry you were ever born. You'll both be sorry if I ever catch you fighting again. It wasn't really a fight, Miss Sandy. Just a little misunderstanding. Well, uh, I see you've already met our foreman. Foreman? Gene, this is Rod Benton, our new boss wrangler. Gene Autry, Lou Phelps, and Baldy Carter. Hi. They applied for a job while you were away, and since we needed help, I hired them. That's what I tried to tell you when you rode in. I suppose I should consider myself lucky. There isn't a loose hand within a hundred miles. <laughs> and I thought you were just another cowpoke trying to horn in. Oh, my cake! Oh, I forgot about my cake! You know, Gene, we're really very lucky to have Mr. Benton. Well, he sold the last bunch of cattle for ten dollars a head, more than we've ever received. Drove men? The buyer was in a hurry. There's a lot more than I could have gotten for him. 
Where's that scarf? I'm always losing it. Here it is. Thanks. Miss Sandy, this is Billy Stone, another new hand. Billy Stone, glad to meet you. Oh, Kate, look what your blasted fighting done to my Kate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we can always eat it for pancakes. What are we going to do about him? Nothing yet. If he don't come back, nobody know what happened to him. When the time comes to take care of Autry, I'll do it. Start out to be a cow hand, and look how I end up. A valet to a dishpan. <laughs> Ride them, cowboy. <laughs> pay you a dollar a week. Wait a minute now, back up there. Can you have what? The little Palomino. He's a racer. He did a quarter in 26 flat. Can I have him, Gene? I'll train him myself. Well, I don't know. It might be arranged. Thanks. We'll have to ask Miss Sandy. Bunch of cows. Sure be a shame if they was rustled. It's a sweet setup, and I don't aim to have it spoiled. Which the sheriff is liable to do if we don't get rid of them cattle we still got hit out. All we have to do is slap a double D brand on them and sell them along with Miss Sandy. Sure, then she gets her dough, we get ours, all nice and legitimate. <laughs> How do you know she's gonna let you take this bunch in now that Autry's back? Why do you think I paid her an extra 10 bucks a head? Besides, she thinks I have a special buyer. <laughs> the way you're handling that, Dame Boss, you might even get to be foreman. I might even get to be owner, if I play my cards right. <laughs> Gene, Billy's fixing to ride Curly out in the corral. Fool kid, that horse isn't even broke. It's what I said. He told me to mind my own business. You like apples, don't you? They're good for you. See? Quiet, now don't spook him. See, I told you what he's trying to do. Oh, Curly. Oh, boy. Won't hurt you now, Curly. It's fixing to mount him. He'll get his fool self killed. Oh, Curly. Steady, boy. Steady. Steady, Curly. Oh, boy. Oh, Curly. Oh, fella. Oh, Curly. That's a boy. Good curly. Come close now. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I'd call myself a liar. You know, I've been worried about Billy. But any kid that can handle a horse like that must have a lot of good in him. Told you I could train him. Good going, Billy. Look, Miss Sandy, the first time with a saddle and he hasn't even balked. Well, that's wonderful. Not for a horseman like Billy. Why is a good jockey like you wasting his time on a ranch? Oh, uh, I got stale. Been riding too much. Just like a lawman. Always suspicious of everybody. Get along, Curly. Any luck with the rustler, Sheriff? Yeah, but so far it's all on their side. Sheriff was asking about you, Gene. Yeah? Anything special? No. Just wondered what you were doing. 
Yes, haven't seen you in town of late. Mr. Benton's been marketing the cattle. Yeah, I know. I could have saved you a trip, Sheriff. Was bringing a bunch in today. Just gathered them off the range last night. I, uh, I've been meaning to speak to you about that, Jean. I, I thought that Rod could take them in. Rod? Well, I, I wanted you to help me with the books. I knew you wouldn't mind. Just as you say. Well, I gotta be going. See you later. You too, Benton. Bye, Miss Sandy. Bye. So long, Sheriff. <laughs> Well, now all of our cattle are wearing the Double D brand. If we sell 200 head, but only pay Miss Sandy for 75, what about the bill of sale? I'll tear it up and make up a new one like I did the last time. I can write even if you can't. Then we better take the dough and hide up for a while. That sheriff's beginning to get mighty nosy. The one I'm worried about is Autry. Forget it. I have a plan that will give the sheriff a rustler and take care of Autry at the same time. Benny, have you seen Lou something? One of my neckerchiefs is missing. You sure have plenty of them. Well, I'll wear this one. Say, uh, if you're running away from the law, you better hit the trail. That sheriff isn't as dumb as he looks. I haven't done anything. Why were you so afraid when the sheriff asked you why you left the tracks? All right. I was accused of throwing a race. It was a frame, but I couldn't prove it. Is that all? So help me. OK, Billy. Good luck. Good luck. What do you mean? Look, Gene, you can't quit now. That's what Rod's working for. You're just playing into his hands. When you're in a pocket, you gotta fight until you're in the clear. I didn't say anything about quitting. I'm just going over to the North Section. But, Gene... Don't say anything to Miss Sandy about me being gone. We're not seeing eye to eye right now. Okay, if you say so. Looks like somebody's been branding cattle, champ. Billy, come here. You better get the table set and bring me another knife, will you? If it ain't peeling, it's a cooking. If it ain't cooking, it's a peeling. Three meals a day, 30 days a month, 365 days a year, including Christmas. What's the matter with you, Billy? You're spookier than a cat. I'm all right. Yes, sir. Pat, have you seen Gene? Oh, he hadn't been around since yesterday. And last night, the Lazy Y was raided. A trail show, the cattle was headed this way. I told you Gene had nothing to do with it. Then what was he doing at the Lazy Y? Gene wouldn't steal any cattle. Have you seen him since yesterday? No, no, I haven't. Where are you going? <laughs> to water my horse. It's any of your business. Rod, you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Thank you. 
So you've been promoted to herding cattle. Lazy Y cattle. Where'd you get them? Where do you think? Sheriff. Hello. Hi, Sheriff. What are you doing out here? What are you doing with stolen cattle? You'll never take me. Hey, Billy! to take in, Billy. All right, if you hadn't gotten that trouble over in Wyoming. What do you know about Rod Benton? Nothing. I don't want to know. How many cattle would you say he took on that last trip? I don't know. About a hundred. That's interesting. Byer said it was over two hundred. Two hundred? That's what he said. What's the matter? Stirrups broke. Will you see about it? Kidding. I thought you were the sheriff. What was the idea of that pony confession, Billy? I thought you did it. Me? I found this near the stolen cattle. It's my neckerchief. Rod must have planted it to frame you. Rod, huh? He's been selling stolen cattle under the Double D brand. Can you prove it? That's why I came back here to look for evidence. I've searched his bunk. What about his bedroom? I didn't look. The money! And the notes on all the sales. What's going on? Take care of this and get the sheriff. Get the sheriff. What's going on here? I don't know. Get the sheriff. We set the trap for Autry, not the kid. I don't like it. Let's get out of here. There's no danger. What do you call that?
you son of a gun. You hurt, fella? No, hardly scratched me. You'll have to give Billy all the credit, Sheriff. He uncovered the plot, but Gene captured him. You were both wonderful. I knew if I gave you two rope enough, you'd find someone to hang with it. There's just one other thing. Young man, do you know the penalty for attacking an officer? No, no sir. I got a telegram from Wyoming. Coyote that threw the race has confessed. Go back to the track any time you want. Well, not me. I like it here. That is, if I can stay. Yeah, doggone right you can. And we'll make you the best doggone cowhand in Texas. <laughs> Well, folks, we hope you liked our story. And we hope you'll follow our lead and enjoy delicious double mint chewing gum, too. We've got a grand story in mind for next week. And both Champ and I are counting on seeing you here. Aren't we, Champ? In the meantime, remember that delicious, refreshing double mint chewing gum is a grand, inexpensive treat that everyone in your family will enjoy. So when you buy it, be sure you get enough for everybody. So long, folks. Be sure to see Gene Autry and Champion in a feature-length picture at your local theater. <laughs>